morning, Destiny Church. Um, I hope you're having a blessed weekend and um, are ready to uh, go into the Word of God together. It's a beautiful morning. It's a little bit windy. I'm hoping that the wind doesn't affect the sound quality here, but um, I'm hoping the only wind that really has an impact on us is the wind of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you for the beauty of your presence for this wonderful, peaceful morning. And I pray in Jesus' name that your, your Holy Spirit's presence would indeed blow on in a beautiful way. We know that you indwell us, but we also know there's fresh baptisms and fresh fillings. And, and we long for more to be deeper and deeper in our relationship with you. So I pray the wind of nature will not um, impact this recording. I just pray that, this will, that your Holy Spirit will guide this message for your glory and honor and the blessing of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. I've entitled today's message, uh, Facing the Giants. And um, you can probably guess what, what I'm going to take as one of my core texts. But let me ask you, in starting out, what are some of the giants that you're facing in your life? What are some of the giants that you are facing in your life? What are some of the uh, intimidating struggles, the challenges? Maybe you look at them as mountains, but they're, they're just these barriers, these walls, and these things that are difficult and sometimes even scary to, to face. And you're thinking, how in the world am I going to get through this situation? Well, King David, even before he became a king, was one who encountered giants. He encountered struggles. And he had a history with God before he even came to the throne as the king of Israel. And I want to start this morning by looking at just a little bit out of 1 Samuel chapter 17 and the story of, of David and, and Goliath, this giant of a man over nine feet tall. That, that David encountered. And I want to remind you of some things, some details in this story. And um, so let's, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. We know that the Philistines were going against the Israelites and, and they, they were facing off against each other. And um, Israelites on one mountain and the Philistines on another in a valley in between. And for 40 days and 40 nights, Goliath would go down into the valley and face the Israelites and challenge them to send out somebody to face him. And he said, if, and if you defeat me, then, then we will fall to you. And if, and if, if I defeat you, then you um, will, will fall in our hands. And that, that's a paraphrase. But the idea is Goliath, this giant of a man, was challenging them to send out a warrior to confront him. And the people, the soldiers of Israel, were terrified. Can you imagine the humiliation? 40 days and 40 nights, more than a month. Every morning, going out, issuing the war cry, like we're going into battle. And then this Goliath comes out and makes his challenge, and all of a sudden, all that courage that they felt when they rose up in the morning disappears and the men flee back to their places. And that's literally what was taking place until a young shepherd boy named David. Now David's not just any boy. He's a young boy. They, the scholars believe he was probably around 16 or 17 years old. He was probably a teenager. But this was a boy that had a history with God. He was skilled in playing the harp in worship before God. He is a, was a boy who apparently knew the God of Israel in a very intimate way and was used to depending on him. And this boy gets sent by his dad to come and bring some, um, some goods for his sons to see how they're doing and, and uh, to, to go to the, 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 the fight and take some provisions. 
And so David goes, and while he's there, he hears this giant of a man making his challenge. David spoke up. It says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the armies of the living God? Notice he didn't just say the armies of Israel. He said the armies of the living God. The people said to him, this verse 27, in accord, in accord with this word, saying, Thus it will be done for the man who kills him. And this is what they, they would do. Basically he said that the king will enrich the man who kills this giant, right? He'll give him his daughter in marriage, and he'll make his house, his father's house, free. Free of taxes. Can you imagine being free of taxes? That alone would be enough to almost make you rich, at least in our day. So these three rewards. But for David, I don't think it's the rewards that he's after as much as it is the honor of God. It bothers him that an army can think that they can taunt the armies of the true living God. I, I love, I love uh, Eliab, his oldest brother, burns with jealousy, I'm sure, and he says, what, David, he said, why have you come down, and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your insolence and the wickedness of your heart. Few have come down in order to see the battle, and David says, what have I done now? Was it not just a question? <laughs> you see the sibling thing going on. It, it's just so real here. King Saul hears about the words of David and he has them brought to him. Saul says to David, you're not, this is verse 33, you're not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him for you are but a youth. Well, he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant was attending his father's sheep. When a lion or bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went out after him and attacked him and rescued him from his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I seized him by his beard and struck him and, and killed him. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, since he has taunted the armies of the living God. And David said, now listen, this is key, verse 37. The Lord, who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. I was thinking about the old The Wizard of Oz movie uh, series. Lion, lions and tigers and bears, oh my! And I thought, well, in this case, it's lions and giants and bears, oh my! Lions and giants and bears. But David was not afraid. Because David had a history with God. And I want you to notice some things in, in terms of how David deals with an encounter with a giant. David looks up to God. He reminds himself of the presence of God, but he also looks back into his history. He looks back at the testimonies of his relationship with God and the way God has provided for him in the past. And, he ta and then he declares that testimony to King Saul. He says, the Lord delivered me from the bear and the lion. When, the, when a lion or bear came and took one of the sheep, I went, I got my sheep, and I grabbed them by the beard, and I killed them. He said, God, the living God was with him then. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. He looked at his past history with God and the faithfulness of God, and he allowed that to give him strength in his present. We must always, friends, we need to always remember the blessings of God. I, I tell people, and I encourage people to write down, to journal when, when God answers a prayer in a very clear way for you, or when you experience a blessing, you just know it's God. When, when something stands out for you, write it down in a journal. Make a journal of the blessings of God, of the provisions of God, of the answers to prayer from God. And when you're struggling or you feel like you're facing a giant, maybe you need to open the journal and go back and reread 
about the faithfulness of God in your history and in your family's history. Write down the testimonies that you hear. Write down the stories because they will strengthen your faith. And remember, faith as small as a mustard seed is a faith where you can speak to a mountain and command it into the sea. You can move giants through the power of Christ. You just need a little bit of faith. And remembering the faithfulness of God in our past history can cause that to rise up. I was facing a giant, if you will, this past week. And I'm not going to go into the details of it uh, for privacy reasons. But let me just say, <clears throat> there, there, was, there was a situation that felt stressful to me. And I was praying about it in the evening. And I, was, I was praying about the situation. And, and I got the, such a clear, beautiful word from God. I know it was the Lord. It wasn't audible. But the thought was so crystal clear. It actually inspired me to preach today's message. This is what I heard. This is what I saw in my mind. Jeff. Remember David and Goliath. I am with you. It was that simple. Jeff, remember David and Goliath. I am with you. When the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is with you, what have you to fear? What have you to fear? Jesus said, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. No matter what the giant is we are facing, he is with us. I, I, I read a quote in the Enduring Word Bible Commentary. It's a, um, from Calvary. I want to say Calvary um, Temple, Calvary Chapel out of Costa Mesa. Uh, California, I believe. I like this quote. David knew that God's help in times past is a prophecy of his help in the future. David knew that God's help in times past is a prophecy of his help in the future. That the stories and the testimonies of what God has done in the past serve as a prophecy of what he's willing to do in the future for us. But will we trust him? Will we look to him? So let me go back to this story and read just a little bit more. As you may know, King Saul tried to give David his armor, but it was too heavy for him, and David wasn't used to this armor. And so instead, he took his, his stick, his shepherd's stick, I assume, in his hand, and he took five smooth stones from the brook. And he put them in his shepherd's bag. And then he approached the Philistine. Verse 41, I'm going to read now. Then the Philistine came on and approached David with the shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy with a handsome appearance. Then the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog? that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine also said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, I just love his boldness here. Listen to me. You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taught him this day. And now he speaks prophetically. <laughs> he makes a positive declaration, a faith-filled declaration. There's no hesitation in what he's saying. You can sense his conviction. God is with me, and this battle is over with already. He said, this day... The Lord will deliver you up into my hands, and I will strike you down and remove your head from and remove your head from you. And I'll give the dead bodies of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know 
that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or by spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Notice David included the rest of the army of Israel, that the Lord would give them into their hands. Then it happened when the Philistine rose and came and drew near to, da to meet David. David ran quickly to the battle line to meet the Philistine. He ran towards the battle. Such confidence in the Lord. And David put his hand in his bag. He took from it a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. And the stone sank into his forehead so that he fell on his face to the ground. Thus David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. And he struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in David's hand. Then David ran and took over, stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. The men of Israel and Judah rose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the valley and to the gates of Akron. It's funny then. Saul's asking about David and who he is. He's asking Abner who it is and said, I don't know. And so he asked David brought in. He asked David brought in. David comes in to Saul and, and it says he's got the Philistine's head in his hand. Oh, the Bible's an amazing book. What kind of giants are you facing? Use your own name. Instead of Jeff, use your name. Don, Bill, Sandy, Jim, Patty, whatever your name. Put your name there. Remember David and Goliath. I am with you, says the Lord. What kind of battles are you facing? God is enthroned over the earth. He's all-powerful, and you, if you are a, a follower of Jesus, if you have given your life to him, if you have repented of your sins and come to him in faith, been baptized into him, you laid your life down, if Jesus is in you, you are a son and daughter of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And us dads care about our kids. And we do everything we can to watch over and protect and help them. We give them freedom to make choices, but we want to be there for them. Your Heavenly Father loves you deeply. Let me share just a couple of the things, because David fa faced many giants, if you will, in his life. In fact, there were other wars where there were other actual giants like Goliath present. And, and men who hung out with David, other soldiers who hung out with them, killed those giants. So we can learn some from, the, from that. You want to be a giant killer? Hang out with a giant killer, okay? Hang out with people of faith. Hang out with brothers and sisters in Christ who have deep faith in him. And he'll rub off on you. But David faced an interesting giant. And you can actually read in chapter 16 and then in chapter 18 about how David had a cultivated worship relationship with God. Because King Saul had disobeyed God, and an evil spirit would come and torment him. And so Saul's servants said, let us you know, find somebody that's as skillful in music to come and play so that the evil spirit will give you relief. And they knew about David, and they brought David. So David had cultivated a worship relationship with God. He was skillful with the harp. And whenever he would play the harp, the evil spirit would depart Saul. Have you ever thought through that a little bit? I want you to think just a moment. Maybe you sing. Maybe you play the piano. Maybe you play the guitar. You get a phone call. My loved one here is struggling. He's got an evil spirit that's messing with him. Will you come and play for him and sing for him? And this isn't just anybody, this is the king of Israel. And David goes there and he plays the harp and Saul gets relief because the worship of God 
the worship of God just invites heaven into the room. The evil spirit don't want to hang out. In chapter 18, right after we read about this account, it talks about how Saul and Jonathan became close. And, and then Saul became jealous of David because after this battle with the Philistines, the, the women came out dancing and say, saying that um, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. And so Saul became jealous. So he had sin in his heart. And the evil spirit would return. And, and you can actually read here just in the very next chapter here in chapter 18. It says, on the next, now it came about on the next day, the day after these women had been singing this song about David's victory over ten thousands. An evil spirit from God came mightily upon Saul, and he raved in the midst of the house while David was playing the harp with his hand, as usual. And a spear was in Saul's hand. Saul hurled the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall, but David escaped from his presence twice. There was a spiritual conflict there. I think the enemy was trying to kill David. He saw through the spear. But David had faced more than one giant in his life. But he maintained a closeness with God, an amazing closeness with God that led to so many of our psalms being written, so many beautiful hymns and poems. But praise to our God. He remembered his past with God. He recounted it. He remembered that God was before him and behind him and over and all around him and surrounding him. And when he encountered his enemies, he did so knowing that God was with him. Friends, this is under the Old Testament law. This is, this is a, a different time from us. We live in an age where the presence of God indwells us. The Holy Spirit of God indwells us. We should have more confidence in God than ever in His presence. So no matter what giant, what struggle, what challenge you face, remember David and Goliath. God is with you too. You also are a son and daughter of God. And if you are not a son and daughter of God, then I would urge you, surrender your life to Christ. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. He didn't promise this world would be easy, just the opposite. He said it would be a struggle. We would have trouble. Paul said, all who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Just read the accounts in the Old and the New Testament of David hiding in a cave from his enemy. Of Paul in prison writing letters to the churches. Of facing lions in the arena. We're not promised uh, that there'll be no problems and struggles in this life, but we are promised the presence of God with us through them all so that we can walk with peace through the fires and the struggles just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Refusing to bow their knees to an idol and instead choosing to face the fiery furnace I know I'm mixing the stories, but there's so many stories in the Bible. And they illustrate again and again and again that God is with His people. And He's so much bigger than the giants that we face. Trust Him. Yield your life to Him and follow Him with all your heart. Let's pray. Father, I just thank You that You are always with us that we never face these giants alone, that there is no mountain that cannot be moved through the power of Christ. If your presence is in it, we can look to you and we can have the faith to say, move. I pray in Jesus' name, I pray in Jesus' name that the gift of faith will rest on each person hearing this message 
And folks, on the really on the church around the world, the gift of faith will rest on us so that we will face the giants of this life with confidence in you, with praise and worship, even in the midst of the enemy, knowing that the victory is yours. Jesus has already purchased that victory through the cross and the resurrection. And we are now in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week, folks.